Residents in Acapulco and the surrounding area continue to pick up the pieces after Hurricane Otis roared ashore with surprising intensity as a Category 5 storm. I'm John Weber for AM Best TV. Here to discuss some of the insurance ramifications are Eli Sanchez, Director, and Salvador Smith, Senior Financial Analyst, both of AM Best Mexico office. And Eli, the commentary notes regulatory standards that could come into play here. Could you discuss that dynamic? Right. Sure, John. So the regulation in Mexico here requires uh, insurers who are underwriting catastrophic risk, mainly hurricane, volcanic activity, or earthquake to constitute a catastrophic reserve that has some equity-like characteristics, meaning that it can only be accessed upon approval by the regulator and it can only be used to pay those obligations deriving from those risks. These are some of the uh, approvals that we are going to see many of the companies going into. Uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, other risk transfer solutions that companies have in place. They, some have the appetite to get that, those risks and to face them with their capital. And for that, they are going to use that cut reserve. In addition to that, and outside of the insurance space, we are also seeing some protections are used for infrastructure that's covered by a catastrophic bond that might be activated. So those are the two things that could come into place. But additionally, there are uh, the solvency requirements that the regulator asks and the minimum a minimum risk and maximum risk a company can undertake and that also protects the balance sheets of insurers in Mexico. So those are the main um, dynamics that we can see in regulatory standards that are protecting very well the solvency of insurers in Mexico. So Eli, how do you see these losses playing out in terms to insurers and reinsurers? Well, I think it's too early to, to say. We have gotten a uh, few estimates from rated entities. We have also read reports of, from uh, risk moderators that they expect an insured loss of around 1.2 billion to 1.8 billion. Uh, economic losses could be much higher. They could go even up to $6.8 billion. So we still have to see how it pans out. There's uh, a strong reinsurance capacity in the Mexican market. Um, we have seen companies getting uh, a lot of catastrophic excess of losses. They also have some other facultative programs. So a whole bunch of that is protected. Usually when we see these kind of claims, there's a, a time of around six months for large claims to be um, to, to be adjusted and truly really to get to that point of how much is going to be uh, a net loss to the insurer and how much is going to go to the insurance market. Uh, one thing here, that we have analyzed within our own data in AMS and with the data from CNSF applying our capital model is that at least we think there's a gross exposure in the beachfront in Acapulco for $1 billion. So for sure, that's going to go to the reinsurance market. To add on uh, for what Eli have said, uh, specifically for risk transfer mechanisms, uh, in other words, the Mexican uh, cap bond, it's uh, probable to trigger uh, given that the central pressure values of the hurricane have been uh, surpassed. Uh, on past experience, we have seen uh, when storms like this have happened, um, the insurers usually cede over three-fourths of, uh, of the business to, to reinsurers. Generally speaking, Eli, what are the market profiles of insurers that are insuring these re resort properties? Are, are they largely domestic insurers or subsidiaries of multinational companies? So I will say it's different kind of insurers. Those are national and also that coming from multinational companies. But the sums assured are so big that maybe they can be the originating uh, insurer or they can go into a coinsurance, but most of that it's really uh, placed in, in their insurance market within really complex, complex structure that have multiple layers. And then you have different, even regional insurers in Latin America participating according to the risk appetite. What we have seen uh, with the hardening of the market, of course, is that there's been some uh, different alternatives that have been trying, that have been, employed or have been explored like some kind of parametric insurance to cover some businesses when the market went very hard in this kind of beachfront, beachfront properties or in on this kind of exposures. But we are seeing 
across the line all kinds of insurers um, originating these businesses. But really, where, where we are going to expect to see it's in the international markets. Now, the risk appetite within these companies varies. We, you can see medium-sized companies that are really focused on, on, on property and are really focused on, on cut on cat business because the cat business uh, usually it's a very profitable one you have to pay claims when you have to but then you have these events and it comes into play your erm capabilities and the appropriateness of your insurance program for rated entities that we have in mexico most of them are in a very good capital position to face those claims now what's it's going to really permit it's the access to to liquidity and to cash calls. This is something very important that we need to monitor across the market. We have seen an interest rate environment that allows for companies that expect that the rates to remain stable to maybe take longer positions. And that could imply that they have to um, to liquidate some of those positions earlier. Of course, I think most of them are going to go from cash to bonds and then from other investments to gain liquidity. And they are also going to employ the cash calls from the insurers, but we have to really take a look at that. And also we really have to take a look at that on on on, on the currency where they have to pay the risks. There was a, a an appreciation of the Mexican peso for a few months ago and a lot of those um, claims uh, have to be paid in another currency. So there's an FX effect that could happen now that the Mexican peso has evaluated. So we have to take into account that as well. It's something that it's evolving. We're going to keep uh, our view on that. Now, AM Best has a stable outlook on Mexico's insurance market recently revised from negative. So Eli, how will carriers' capital levels stand up to a storm like this? I, I, I will say it's it's difficult to say as of the moment. But so far, our rated uh, insurers that we have uh, touched base with, they are quite well protected for, for these scenarios. But of course, if the capacity of the program is surpassed and they are going to have tough sort of losses above that capacity, that might be an issue. It's something that might be well placed among big risks like 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 property and businesses and all of that but when you go to more uh small businesses maybe you have a program that has a limit of units but the hurricane was so big and there's a, a floating population within acapulco being a tourist destination that re that amount of cars can really add up to go above what you have have for catastrophic coverage for that so this is really going to put into test the capacity that they are buying. Now, in previous events, we have seen only in, in few hurricane storms really being affected. We had Patricia a few years ago. Everything went to reinsurance. It was one of the largest ones, and it didn't happen as well. Uh, we had some other past in, in, in the 90s that were quite dangerous for the market. But as I said, ERM capabilities have evolved. The solvency frameworks have evolved. So I think, right. In this moment of time, Mexican in insurers are very well placed to absorb this kind of, of, of event. Uh, let's wait for not another event to happen like this. We still have around a month to go in the hurricane season. So if we have another event like this, it could really be damaging. And, and we have to keep in mind that Mexico is a cut prone area. So we have earthquakes, we have hurricane, we have volcanic activity in a lesser scale. So we have to keep an eye on that. Okay, so to complement what Eli has said, uh, the intensity and quickness of, of such storms are likely to contribute to the reinforcement of the hardening of the reinsurance market. Uh, in other words, the driver of, of, of this storm has been a, a El Nino phenomenon, and this will contribute to, to for reinsurers, uh, I mean, for, sorry, for reinsurers to underwrite this cat business. Yes, and, and that's an, an excellent point because uh, probably we're going to see higher insurance costs more evenly justified now in Latin America, especially in Mexico with this event. So that can really have an effect on the on the PNL going forward. And also it can really sh shape shift the, uh, the risk appetite of some insurers, because as I said, these events are not so frequent and maybe they can see that an alternative is to retain more risk instead of buying a, a much more expensive protection. It still has to pan out to really assess what's going to be 
the uh, effect on, 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 on their capital. Uh, we expect not to have more events like this, but for sure, if events like this keep happening or the hardening of the market really starts to to make way into creating more risk appetite for in, for primary insurers, it's something that we have to take a look in, into our outlook. That was Eli Sanchez, director, and Salvador Smith, senior financial analyst, both of AM Best Mexico office. To read the full report, log on to ambest.com. For AM Best TV, I'm John Weber.